Okay, this is the big inductor that I've just finished building. It's um, 10 turns of heavy equipment cable on the microwave oven transformer core. It's got the, the wooden bobbin that uh, laser cut and uh, the, there's a gap of half a millimetre formed with a piece of um, plastic sheet. So, for testing, <coughs> I've got a 30 volt power supply, it's more like 25 volts. Uh, all of these are big smoothing capacitors to give you a sufficient energy storage. Um, and there's a power MOSFET which switches the inductor on or off and a current sense resistor um, 12.5 milliohms to measure the, the current pulse. Um, that is a freewheel diode, so when the MOSFET switches off, the voltage rise at the the drain can get clamped to the, the input voltage. MOSFET is driven with my adjustable pulse generator and um, we'll look at the waveforms on the scope. The, this current sense resistor is actually just a piece of copper foil uh, folded round to eliminate the inductance. So if we um, turn on our pulse generator you can probably hear the ticking every second or more often if I turn it up. <coughs> and if we connect up our scope um, let me see to there and to there. That's there. I'll also connect up the, the other channel to or, uh, the other channel to measure the supply voltage. Because we're drawing such a large current, the supply voltage does sag uh, during the pulse. So we'll need to take account of that. So, I'll turn our cursors off just now. So the upper trace is the supply voltage and the lower trace is the current. And you can see the current increases nice and linearly, as it should with an inductor. And we can vary the length of the pulse, like so. If we increase the current far enough, the, the pulse far enough, then current starts to increase more rapidly, which indicates saturation. And saturation is occurring right about that knee there. You can also see that the supply voltage is starting to drop because it can't supply enough current to keep the thing going. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's um, get this a little bit bigger. Um, where are we? There's okay. We'll uh, capture that and the thing off. So let's look at some figures. Uh, we'll turn our cursors on to track cursor A and cursor B. So we can <coughs> measure the inductance by the slope here. So uh, between the two cursors, delta V is 740 millivolts. So 740 millivolts divided by 12.5 milliohms is a current of 59 amps. It rises through that in delta T which is 668 microseconds 
So 59 amps divided by 668 microseconds is about 89,000 amps per second rise rate. To get the inductance, we take the reciprocal of that, multiply it by the voltage, which is um, about 28, say 26 volts times 26 is 290 microhenries. Now, as for the saturation current, we move that until we get to the, the knee, which is maybe about there. Yeah. And the channel B voltage is 1.72 volts, which is 1720 millivolts, divided by 12.5 milliohms, which is 137 amps, which is pretty darn good. Uh, since at most I'll be running this at 100 amps. In theory, in practice, I might run it at 80 amps to keep things happy. So, generally, that appears to be quite good. I'll uh, do a, record these graphs, do some better calculations, but uh, that should do the trick. Uh, okay, thanks for watching.